Bottom of the ninth. Wonder what's gonna happen this morning. Sun's gonna come up and we're gonna see lots of deer. I can tell you what didn't happen. It didn't snow, so the uh, forecast was real wrong. But the storm has passed through. It looks like it's gonna be a gorgeous day. We need a little luck. Time to get lucky. Keep my pops a deer. Here we go. Here we go. Ago. Call him a short G2 book and uh, we'll go see if we can put a bullet in him. Give him a Weatherby Wampum welcome. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He's hurt bad. Hold on. Just aim, just aim that high. Just take your time. Let him stop. He's hurt bad. Where did I hit him? Yep. Got go. him. Yeah, I got him. He just went down. He went down? He's still alive, but I have him bedded. Did I hit him low? Or back? Or what? First one, you hit him a little low. I had it dead on. Second one, you hit him back. 
Okay. Third one, you hit him right low in the front shoulder. <sighs> you never missed his body, though. No. No, I hit him three for three. First mule deer with a rifle, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Good freaking job, man. Good job. It all came together. Man, I swear a lot of our hunts end on the last day. Congrats, bud. Hey. Oh, it's been a lot of fun. Always. Always. Your very first rifle mule deer. It's the ripe old age of... 64. <laughs> Take your kids hunting and fishing, because you never know, they may turn around and take you when you're old and gray like I am. <laughs> Man, couldn't have worked out any better. What a fun trip. This is a, it's a pretty cool place, you know? It's weird because we hunt, I would say 99% of our hunts are public land hunts. And so it's really odd when you're limited to private land only, which is this place. And it's not a giant place by any means. We kind of just had to work with what we were given, but it's, it was the perfect setup for my dad. And, uh, we got to look over a bunch of mule deer, saw some beautiful country, spent a ton of quality time together, man, just ended on a high note. We weren't sure if it was gonna happen, and lo and behold, we found the G2 buck. This buck is really cool. He's got some awesome fronts, and uh, again, it'll be not only my dad's first rifle mule deer, but will also be his largest deer ever, which is um, pretty dang awesome. We're watching him. We just been waiting a few minutes so he can expire fully, and I'm excited to get over there and go have my dad put his hands on him. Get the old heart pumping? Yeah. Right there. He's leaking good. Pop. That big beast. Big ready mule deer. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. Man, those trunks are freaking sweet. Yeah. How big his neck is and stuff. I know, he's huge. Right? Great ex experience with my son and Logan and a uh, beautiful piece of property and just thankful to be here. So, it's awesome. He's a cool, cool buck. Smells like a ready mule deer, doesn't he? Oh boy, you do. Just lots of character. Well, we got all the photos. Lots of uh, ones that we can have for years and years to come. And now we're gonna get them taken care of. I think we're gonna do a shoulder mount for Pops. Sure. Winston, I can see his ball snacks right here, buddy. <laughs> kind of cool thing, my dad made these knives back years ago. Get to break down his buck with them. He bought the blanks of the blades, but then everything else put together. Hold a real nice edge. Dad did good work on that. What year was that you made those? Oh man, back in the 90s. ATS 34 steel, which is one of the best knife steels, at least it was then. Micarta handles, aluminum bolsters, and just hand hand polished, hand finished, and they uh, hold up really well. The little caper that Brian's using is D2 steel, and I use that to uh, totally break down my largest archery bull, which is a 310 bull. So, good stuff. Well, all the work has been done. Just putting the meat in the truck. We're gonna go get things packed up and make our way out of here. Can't thank you guys enough for watching uh, any videos that you've tuned into this year. And uh, if you have an opportunity to get out and take the person or people who got you into hunting, make sure you make a priority to do that. Stressed enough, but uh, Eric, Casey, and myself, all of our dads got us into hunting as kids, and it's obviously become a 
huge piece of our life. Even if we wouldn't have gotten a deer, it would have been awesome. But it was cool to see him get his first ever rifle buck and certainly his biggest buck ever. And so uh, memory that's gonna last a lifetime. What he said, for sure. <laughs> Taxidermist bill, butcher bill, it's all good. It's worth yeah. it, right? Absolutely, time with my kid, priceless. This might be the last video for a little bit on the best season yet 2.0. It's gonna take a bit of a pause. We might still have a couple other things in between, but we have an incredibly special project we're doing next. We've got about uh, two days before we head out. A longtime follower, Daniel, is going to be joining us on an incredible Nevada elk hunt, a late season elk hunt. We're gonna have the whole crew together. Martin, Eric, Casey, Logie Bear, myself. It's crazy enough, it's the first time all year just because of scheduling, we're, uh, we're all gonna be together and we're gonna be with Daniel trying to make uh, his dream come true. Daniel has spina bifida and he's a disabled hunter. So we uh, were able to find him a tag. So it's gonna be a ton of fun. He's been a long time follower to the channel dating back to when it first started in 2011. And so anyways, uh, we cannot wait to share that with you, but we may be holding on to that footage for our annual movie premiere, which is gonna be in February before the Hunt Expo. And so uh, what we'll probably do is the movie premiere, and then we'll release the day-by-day -day series of all of the hunts shortly thereafter. So I don't know what the schedule is gonna be, we'll keep you posted, and thank you guys again for uh, following along.